Hey, what's up, everybody? Tegan here. Um, we're going to be doing a tutorial today in Pix and Sight, and it's going to be over narrowband combination, um, specifically AJ and O3, um, with a emphasis on our O3 data. What we're going to be doing is making sure your O3 data really pops. This is how to get those orange and those blues. Some people suffer, or, um, struggle suffer. Uh, some people struggle with uh, their O3 data specifically in the way that you can't get it to show out from under your HA data. Your HA data is either way overpowered and it's muting your O3 data, um, or you just can't necessarily color correct it. Um, I personally find that my O3 data is mute, what was used to be muted by my HA data, and I never understood how these astrophotographers got these beautiful blue and orange images. So that's what we're going to be working on, and it's relatively simple. Um, what we're going to be doing is stretching our HA, O3 data, and our O3 data, um, and then we will be focusing directly on our O3 data. We're going to be masking the background and just stretching the nebulous regions only. So we're going to just be making them brighter. While the background remains completely dark, we're going to have the contrast um, O3 channel, and when we combine it with our HA data, it's going to show through much more vibrantly than if we just applied it with a normal stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and start stretching using intensity transformations and histogram transformation. Increase the midtones a little bit. Um, I could do a lot because there is a lot of signal out here, but since I didn't do HDR multi-scale transform um, and really darken this bright region here, I'm just going to make pretend as if that's what I did do and just lower these midtones so there is some contrast in that core area. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the O3 data, but if your O3 data is lacking, let's say you only have two hours of data, you can really stretch this because um, even if it's really noisy, noise isn't going to be a factor because we're going to be blurring this image and then adding a our luminance layer to the top for detail. Um, so what I like to do, I do like to bring out the O3 data as much as I can, but keep the background a little gray. You don't want to do any clipping like so. It'll look unnatural when you combine them. So I'd say about right there is a good medium for me. All right, so we have our HA data and our, three da our, our O3 data. Um, we can go ahead and send our HA data to the top because we're not going to be using that right now, and we're going to be focusing on our O3 data. Now, we're going to be creating a mask. We're going to be masking the background, and we're going to be highlighting the nebulous regions. Um, this area, this very bright area, is going to be highlighted the most. And then these uh, wispy areas are also going to be highlighted, but not so intensely. And, but these are the important parts. These are the parts of the image that are going to give you depth and a three-dimensional look. So for a mask, I go to process, all process, range selection. This tool is great for, for uh, utilizing masks. Um, and I'll show you why. Well, it's, it, you can manipulate exactly what you want highlighted and what you don't want highlighted. This lower limit is going to bring down the dark or the, uh, the lights and only um, show you the most vibrant regions of the image, and that's this area right here. And you can see you can have some of this outy, outer detail is highlighted as well, um, but the stars are also highlighted, and we're not going to want to highlight these stars, so you just want to adjust the smoothness layer. And doing that feathers this, um, it, it kind of blends this bright area into the background, so when we do brighten this final image with our mask applied, we're not going to get a weird artifact, weird edge around this nebula. That, that would look unnatural. So I usually bring this up to about 65-70%. Um, a nice feathering between the background, uh, but it's still, it's still too harsh. So we're going to do a fuzziness, or we're going to increase our fuzziness um, setting. And what that does is gives us a little bit of rain, dynamic range within our uh, mask. And you can see that this extremely bright area right here, that's going to be, um, we, we're obviously going to increase, that's going to be the most intensely um, brightened area. And then this 
area right here is not so much, but I want to make sure there's still a nice blend. See, so you go from really bright to semi-bright to very faint to black, and that's kind of what you're looking for. And so I'm going to go ahead and apply this mask directly to my O3 data. And just drag it over like so. Um, this brown tab, when it turns brown, it means your mask is applied. But what yours will look like is this. And you're going to see this background is going to be dark red. Or, sorry, solid red. And that this area is the background, and it's not going to be touched. When we, when we brighten our image, only this, this very um, bright core and these outer wispy areas are going to be um, highlighted. And, and that's exactly what we want. So go ahead and go to Mask, Show Mask. Um, you can close your range selection. We're going to go to Process, and we're going to go Stretch Our Image. We're going to stretch our O3 data, and you're going to see the huge difference that this makes. Now let's do Live View. All right now, if I just go back and forth from default to an increased levels, you will see a huge jump in the signal. And you don't want too much. It can it'll look it won't look natural, but you you do want to you don't want to do it too little because then you're not going to get the O3 data to show. So I'd like to bring it up, say about right there. Remember, don't don't worry if it's noisy, because that will be completely eliminated. So we have our bright O3 data, and we have our HA data. Now what we can do. We can remove mask, um, and what I like to do, my goodness, what I like to do is edit my O3 data, or my, sorry, my HA data, to look background-wise similar to my, my O3 data. So this, is gonna, this area right here is going to be very blue compared to this area. You kind of want to even them out. So I'm just going to stretch my HA data. A little bit. Just bring up the midtones a tad, and that I think that'll help. That'll bring this uh, region to a more equal, a black rather than a blue. Um, so now it's time to color combine. So we've stretched this image, we've stretched this, we applied a mask, we stretched the nebulous regions. Now we're going to combine them using pixel math. And I don't use this tool very often, only for this purpose, actually, um, and maybe combining a range mask with a star mask. But this is the equation that I use, and it's fairly simple. Um, so, oops, sorry about that. What you want to do is uncheck, use a single RGBK expression, and then go to Expression Editor. And from there, we want to map our hydrogen alpha data to our red channel, our oxygen data to our blue channel, and we're going to create a synthetic green channel by combining them. So for red, you want to map your HA data. For your blue channel, again, O3 data. And for your green channel, the little equation you're going to want to use is open parentheses, HA data, HA data, HA data times 0.5, close the parentheses, plus another set of parentheses, your O3 data times 0.5, or asterisk 0.5. And what these numbers do, they adjust your color. So at 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, you're going to get reds and blues. At 0 0.9 and 0 0.9, you're going to get like greens and yellows and some oranges maybe. Um, but at 0.5 and 0.5, I find it's a good medium between the blues and the orange. That's the or 0.4 even on 0.4. Um, that's what I've been using, and it's been worked well for me. So that's the uh, formula that you go ahead and plug in for your green channel. Hit OK. Um, now go to the uh, Destinations tab, create a new image. I'm going to name this Eagle by color. And for color spaces, make sure you have it at set to RGB color. Otherwise, if it's same same as target, you're just going to get a monochromatic image. So then go ahead and don't globally apply, just apply. All right, now you can see that your your blues are really popping here. Um, maybe a little bit too much in the background, but that's okay. We can adjust that, and that'll be easy to adjust once we apply a lumen flare. Uh, but you can definitely see the blues here in this 
overlaying hazy cloud that gives it almost a three-dimensional look. Um, I like I like the colors so far, um, but let me show you what it would look like if we didn't apply a mask. So I'm just going to do Control Z. Oh, Control Y. I'm just going to remove this mask. So this is what our image looked like stretched. Um, and I'm just going to apply that, and you're going to see the huge difference. You can't even you can see blue in the stars and blue in the background, but this this middle area is muted, and that's what I that's what I always suffered with. I was never able to struggled with Jesus. <laughs> okay, so I was never able to get those blues to pop out. They're always muted, so I don't like that version. Um, this one works a lot a lot better for me because I have uh, I definitely have those blues in here. Um, and so we're going to work with that. What we're going to do is just saturate it. And this is just a color channel. So it can be noisy. It can be grainy. It can be rough. You just want your colors to be accurate. Because what we're going to do is get our HA data and essentially just pop it right over the, the uh, color data. And the details from our HA data will be present while the color from our color channel will be present. And it's going to be the best of both worlds. So we're going to go ahead and color correct our combined image. And I like to go to intensity transformations and work with the curves, um, specifically the saturation. Uh, I like to kind of amp it up a lot because when you layer over the HA data, it, it kind of mutes it. Um, so you, I can definitely see in this background area is, is a little bit blue. So I'm going to change my blue levels. This. Um, Linear interpolation uh, tab right there is very helpful. So decrease my blues. That leaves over some greens. I'm going to use linear interpolation. And I'm going to decrease my greens a bit. Just about right there. Now, maybe my midtones. There we go. And I'm going to decrease my uh, red midtone mid-tones as well, just because I think this is a little too purple and that's a little too orange. So about right there, maybe decrease my, my blues, the darks a little bit, bring down the greens again. Okay, yeah, I think that's, eh, that's pretty nice. I could do some, um, I can do some adjustments in Photoshop, um, or even here if I took the time to see without saturated, even with it, maybe not as saturated even. You can all you, and this is just personal preference. You don't have to adjust the brightness. Um, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna say that's okay. I'm I'm liking the blues and the oranges, and there's a little a little bit of greens in the middle. Not too not green but uh, a good transition between the blue and the, the HA. I'm going to go ahead and apply my curves as such and like I said this is a person this is all personal preference. Um, now we have our final color image. Now yours might look if you didn't get a lot of data I think I got 14 hours of both HA and O3 data um, for a total of 28 hours in this image and that makes for a noiseless image. Not completely noiseless, but pretty noiseless. And if you've only got two hours of each, or an hour and a half, or five hours maybe, of each channel, uh, once you zoom in, you, I mean, you can see this noise here, but what, you, might, you might have a bunch more noise. Um, and that's okay, because we're going to blur this image by using process, convolution, convolution. And what this does is, by adjusting the standard, standard deviation, you blur the image, thus annihilating all noise. And the noisier your image, obviously, the more the, the more pixels your your standard deviation is gonna have to be set to. But for me, since I had a rather noiseless image, um, I'm gonna just set mine to about four. Not the three point nine isn't the diff is isn't a big yeah whatever. So four point oh. Just gonna go ahead and apply that. And I'll show you here the difference between the two. Um, and you're, when I zoom in, you're going to see zero noise. And that's that's pretty much what you're looking for. So that versus that. Big difference. No noise. Um, 
The details are obviously a little bit uh, blurry, but that's okay because we're going to be using our HA data. And make sure you don't crop any of these because if you crop one, you can't apply it because of a geometry error. Um, so keep these uncropped. You can crop later. So now we have our final color image. It's blurred. The noise is gone. Now we're going to combine our HA image. And I do this through LRGB combination. Under all processes. Um, so this is the screen that will come up. And you want to deselect RGB because this is our luminance layer. Um, we're going to be adding it on top of our color data as a luminance layer. So you want to select your HA data. Um, if you had to star align it, make sure you select the registered one. And here you can adjust the lightness and the saturation. Uh, you can do chrominance noise reduction, but that's not absolutely necessary, and it takes a little bit longer. So that's the only setting that I need to change, and I'm going to go ahead and apply it. What you should see is a sharpness and, um, yeah, and color and detail improvement. And you can see there has been a large one. And so if you hit Control Z, Control Y, you can see the detail sharpen up. Um, the color pops. You can adjust the stars with the star mask. But you can definitely see uh, this O3 data, which is what we were actually um, concerned with. It wasn't. It wasn't going to pop if we didn't. Uh, mask it at first and increase the uh, brightness of the nebulous regions. So yeah, this is, I like this color. This probably, this wouldn't be my final image. I'd definitely do some adjusting, maybe some cropping. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys my method of making the O3 data pop. This really transformed my images and um, it was kind of one of those turning points in my editing process. And I don't know why I didn't figure it out sooner. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If I've gone too fast or if I'm missing something, if I'm not explaining my process well enough, if you can't follow through for any re or follow along for any reason, just let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and stay tuned and subscribed because I will be putting a lot of these kind of tutorial videos online. So thanks so much.